My vision is my compass. Hi, welcome to the Winners Find a Way show and podcast with your host, Trent M. Clark, three-time World Series coach, CEO of Leadershipity, serial entrepreneur, having started 12 companies, coach to the 1%, and an international speaker. This show is going to be your go-to podcast for facing adversity, being inspired, and overcoming obstacles, all from the best in the world, business, sports, and leadership. Hate the crappy ingredients in many beverages and energy drinks? Rebellious Infusions are the go-to functional beverage. They have five or fewer plant-based organic ingredients. No sugar, no calories, loaded with antioxidants to boost your immune system. And L-thionine for brain health. Rebellious Infusions are available at drinkrebellious.com. Rethink your drink. For 10% off of your next purchase, use the code 99999. I, again, I'm going to go back to creating a vision. So I create this vision of what I want, and then I honor that, and I stay true to that. My vision is my compass. So I keep mm. my word to myself. So when I said that I wanted to have a $3 million plus business, what ended up happening is that my brain was like, okay, if you're going to be a millionaire, then you cannot be negative in your bank account. And so, right, my reality was incongruent with the reality that I built in my brain. And so then I'll, I went and I found out how can I budget? I don't want to be negative. And honestly, for the first time in my life, I saved $7,000 in three months by not spending any money. And then I really liked it. And I'm like, oh, the fastest way to have money is not to spend it. I Crazy concept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? It seems right? so wow, who thought of this? This is really good. <laughs> yeah, and to me, like budget was like a bad word. I thought oh, right. was, like I can't yeah. do what I want with my own money. So I changed all of that mindset around money. So I take action. So I would say that for me, people ask me, I, I had a coach when I first started from my garage. Uh, within five years, I hired a coach. And then the people in her group, she had a women's group and people asked me, how did you become so successful? I'm still with her and I'm not as successful as you are. And I say, because I do what I say I'm going to do. Like uh, that is the difference. I, I do what I tell, like we have our one thing that we're going to do for the month, the one thing for the year. And all my actions are towards those things that I said I wanted, right? Like I want to be number one in California. I want to have great relationships with my family. So I do what I say that I want. So I think that's one of the biggest things also is honoring your word. If you well, say you want to be, right? If you say you want to be the best, then why are you not practicing? If I'm going to be the best speaker, then I need to be at Toastmasters. Then I need to have a coach for speaking. I need to observe and study the best. Like that's what I do. And that's what I think is the greatest, one of the greatest tools that I have. I think that, you know, it's hard to find that integrity, right? We, we find a lot of people that talk and they don't do what they say. And it's not uncommon. Listen, I've been guilty of it. Of course, myself, it's, it's not a simple thing. And it's a value that I think was quite frankly, I think it was more common in our society 40, 50 years ago, maybe because of less options, maybe because of less distractions. I'm sure there's a lot of reasons and excuses we could make on that, but there was also accountability, mm -hmm. right? There, I think, And I think that was higher back in the day because when people said, hey, Trent, you said you were going to do this. A week later, they would be like, hey, did you do it? And like now everyone kind of just lets you slide, right? We, we all kind of let it slide. I think that tolerance for that is tough, but all right, let's pivot to a little bit before we get into some Q&A here real quick. When the journey gets hard for people, right? I mean, you've been to this horrible environment as a kid with no models, no models to show you how to do it better. You finally meet a pushy angel, right? Who, who shows you a better way and believes in you, but you still have the family challenge, uh, divorce. This is just not easy. You're raising two of your brothers. I mean, things get hard on people. If someone's in a situation where it's hard today and they want to be elite, they want to be where you're at someday. I want to do what you did, Hazel. Like, what do you give them? What would be the best advice for you to get started on that way today? You know, going back to role models, I want to tell you that my dad was in and out of prison. My dad was a heroin addict. He was a gang member. I definitely was missing a role model. But he did tell me a, a lot of little things. And he did, My both my parents told me a little sayings that I hung on to. So I would say go to somebody that you admire 
and say what you want because they become a power partner. They believe in you and they believe they can. Don't go to somebody who is also down and out and tell them your problems because then your problems are going to feel a lot worse. Go and share your situation with somebody who's gonna uplift you, somebody who's gonna help you, hold hold you up. Again, we wanna, we, we're all by ourselves and we drown by ourselves, right? Like no matter how great we are, even us at our level of the, let's just say the top 1%, we're never alone. We don't, we share our burdens. That's what EO does, right? We're in this entrepreneur group where we meet once a month. And then what, what do we do? We talk about the bottom 5% of our lives that are, that keep us down. Of course, our top 5%, but then the bottom 5%, we do that at the top. We, we need to do that at the bottom as well, wherever mm-hmm. we are. Share that burden, get it out from inside of you out. And then as you're speaking, what happens a lot of times as a psychologist, we're trained to just listen because most people, they say what's so, and then they end up like solving their own problem in their same breath. They're like, well, you know, maybe this is not really true. Right. And so they're inventing this. We're always inventing things always, right? Fear. We invent it. And if we're present that we're always inventing things, then why don't we invent a scenario that serves us, right? But no, we're inventing the fear scenario, the worst case scenario. So for me, I'm very conscious that I'm what comes out of my mouth. Is it real or is it not real? I think that's so good. Talk a little bit about, you've had lots of success. I mean, you've won many battles. What do you think the number one thing is that you've overcome in your lifetime? The number one battle you faced. Well, in the book, I write about my mom going to prison, right? And so as adults, we tend to deal with our feelings that we didn't deal with as children Mm -hmm. and not believing in myself because, you know, my mom and my dad separated. She married and divorced many times. When um, she divorced some of my stepfathers, I was a little bit older and I can recall feeling very angry like they left me. Right. I don't know that they're having problems with my mom. I'm thinking they're leaving me. And so as an adult, that manifests itself as you love me, but you could leave me. So nothing felt felt secure. Right. And so then in all my relationships, in my love relationships and in my familial relationships and in my friends, I always felt that people could leave me. And so I was not authentic and I was uh, really an angry person. And so I had to get over that. And to get over that, you have to go there where it hurts, where you don't want to go and where it's heavy. And most people, they tend to run away from where it hurts. You just like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, don't, you know, we're not going to have that conversation because they fear that it's going to get ugly. And But you have to go there. You have to face all your fears. And that's what I did, Trent, one by one. I, I told one of my sisters, I fear, I feel like you love me, but you don't like me. And then I told another sister, I feel like you don't love me. And those kinds of conversations, I mean, I felt like clear and present danger. Like I thought I was going to die asking that question. Right. I felt that I already knew the answer. And the answer is, yeah, you don't love me. And that is God awful. And so that is was in my space. For five years, I was in my garage you know, not growing, having a lot of problems, get, you know, I was already divorced. My life wasn't working. It was these traumas and things that I was dealing with that I didn't know how to solve. And then I started going to personal development seminars. And that's where I started working on myself. I started going to the places I was avoiding. I I started asking the questions like, is is it really true? I would say my sister's Hmm. a bitch. My sister doesn't love me. I would say stuff like that, you know? And then it was like, well, does she really not love you? And it's like, you know, well, I mean, she doesn't act like it, you know, and all this stuff. And, and, and then I started getting like my mind really straight, like, come on, she loves me, you know. But I asked her, you know, I text her. I saw my older sister on Facebook. She put a sign that said, can't we all just get along and love each other? I don't know what crisis was happening in the yeah. world. And then I text her and I said, I saw what you put on Facebook and I feel like you don't love me. Why don't you start with family? I told her this, okay? And she's like, you're so stupid. She said, <laughs> Yeah. 46 years. Really? That's what it takes. And for me, I interpreted that as, oh my God, that's proof. She doesn't love me because I'm telling her, I don't, you don't love me. And she says, you're so stupid. So then obviously she doesn't love me. That's the proof. And then at night I was thinking about it and I said, you know what, what does she really mean by that message? And what, and I interpret it a different way, right? We're always adding meaning to things, you know, the real, I'm adding the reality of that, right? I'm inventing what she means because I don't know what she means. And I said, wait a minute, she's saying 
46, I've been, I was 46 years old when I sent her that text. Okay. And I, um, she's like, I've been loving you for 46 years. You know, you're fucking stupid. Basically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what can I do to make you feel like you love me? And in that moment, I totally got it. And I'm like, you don't have to do anything. Like you love me. You don't have to show me. You don't have to do anything for me. You don't have to call me and tell me you love me. You don't have to visit me. I just know it. I totally got it. So going to those spaces and, you know, I've never asked her that question. That is how just how generally I would feel because of all the trauma growing up is that I'm not lovable and that you could leave me, but it's all made up right? It's something that I invented. And then when I start to ask the questions is I get the answers and the answers are like, come on, I love you. What are you? And it's crazy. Once you ask the question, it's like, as soon as you're halfway done asking the question, you already know that you're, you know, you're being silly. <laughs> that's not true. They, of course they love you. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's been my biggest thing that to overcome of my childhood traumas. All right. Let's talk about, because as a counselor, you probably see a lot of people and a lot of people come in like, Hey, I want to do what you did. They say these things to you. They say, Hey, you like, I've got these challenges and it's never going to be different. It'll always be like this Hazel. And you're like, you know, again, is that true? What, when you look at people, what do they not see about themselves in the mirror that you think they should? Oh my God. That's such a, a great, Great question, Trent. Um, so in my training in my office with the counselors, I tell them, you know, everybody has something. So when you need to remind people of their greatness. Yeah. So when they call, I tell people, you're articulate, you're intelligent. You graduated high school. You have 10 years experience in customer service. Uh, you have an age degree. We point out all the, all, we, we take away their negative, uh, they're injured, right? These are people that are injured. So all they focus on is their injury. I can't do anything. I, mm -hmm. and so what we do is point out like, well, ma'am, you did call us. So you can use the telephone. Yep. You have a great voice and you sound it, you're intelligent. And like, and so we start pointing out like really positive things and they end up feeling better about themselves when they walk away. So, mm. you know what? It's so funny that you, people tell me, I want to do what you do. Right. Even my own kids are like, I want to, I love your life. I want to do what you do. And I, <laughs> you want to do what I, what I do, then you gotta, to get here, you gotta do what I did. Oh and yeah. I became very grateful for what I have. Okay. We're all born equal, right? Rich and poor people. We're all born with the same, right? We all have 10 fingers. We all have brains, yep. you know, mouth and ears and two feet. Lead the same. Yep. Yeah. For the most part that we're all born the same. So be grateful. We all have equal opportunities here. Right. And so, and I'll tell you coming from the most poorest that you, we do have equal opportunity. Yes. We have, some people have, you know, network and connections, but we could build on that too. We could get level playing ground, right? The playing field. Can, and so then we could level that playing field by, you know, working a little bit harder. And so what I did is I became very grateful for who I am. I became, first it was, I'm grateful that there's no, no drive-by shootings where I live right now. Like that's the kind of gratitude that I had. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful that my kid is healthy, that I had a healthy kid. I'm grateful that I'm living in a home. I'm grateful I have food today. I'm grateful I have a job. I'm grateful I have a relationship, right? And so then, then my paycheck comes along. I'm grateful I have my paycheck. I became very grateful. So you just have to start a gratitude practice. Even now, like I have a relationship that looks like, honestly, it is the love of my life. It is the one that I envisioned. If there was a miracle and I believed in miracles, I would have this relationship. This is my storybook relationship. I have it. But how do I keep it and how does it continue to get yeah. great? Right. And there's a lot of relationships out there, even marriages that tend to like even my own marriage died. If I had done this in my marriage, I bet I would still probably be married and happily married. And so what I do with my relationship is I gra I'm grateful for it. I'm always acknowledging my partner for all the things that he does. And I become, it, it feels good to me to say like, you know what, thank you so much for bringing me my coffee. Like that's a great attention to detail. You knew that at this time I like my coffee and how I like it. And I love that you can bring it to me. Like, I'm just like constantly grateful. And so that's one of the biggest things that I do. So I, be, I talk to clients and I talk to people and I'm like, you're really amazing. You're on the phone with us. You know how many people do not even do this? You know how many people, Trent, don't even ask me questions or advice? Okay. I've been kicked out of groups. I started a group called w uh, Millionaire Women of Whittier, which is the city where we were living. Yeah. And as soon as I started having success, they kicked me out of the group. They got uncomfortable being around me. And so that's one of the, what, you know, you have to surround yourself with people that are successful, people that you want to be like, and then learn from them 
and be in their in their circle. So changing mm -hmm. your environment is another really big uh, success tool. Um, no matter where you are, like people would say to me, "You're you were a big fish in a small pond." That's what happened, right? You know, you grew up poor and you were a big fish around everybody else. And I'm like, no, around everybody else, I was just like everybody else. You know, I wanted to be a gang member. I was mean. I was judgmental. I was fighting. I was ditching. I was getting that F's in school. I was not a rock star in school at all. There's no way. I, I was the kid you don't want your kid to hang out with, okay? And so what happened was I said, I changed my environment. So a fish can't grow big in a small pond. I had to change my environment to grow. And when I got the job at this law firm, that's where I changed my environment. And now I'm exposed to judges and lawyers and people that are millionaires. I never had that before. And so there I was like, oh my gosh, this man has a hand-painted Ty, like, how can I get that? Like, what do you do? We look the same. You know, he has 10 fingers. I have 10, you know. That's right. That's what I did is I surrounded myself. I was in a different pond and I keep doing it, right? Then I joined EO. You know, once my company hit a million dollar mark, I joined entrepreneurs that were making a million dollars or more. And then now in this organization, we have within it other groups that make $15 million or more. And yeah. then my friends. And so that's another big thing is surround yourself with those kinds of people. I love it. Thank you so much, Hazel. This has been awesome. I just drew a bunch of things today, like, you know, pushy angels. My vision is my compass. I hire coaches. A fish can't grow in a small pond. Start it in your garage. Take action. Do what I say I'm going to do. I love that. Um, even finding value from your parents in prison and what they gave you, right? Like they did give you um, some some quotes and some things to tell them what you want, right? Like you developed that, found people that you admired, told them what you want, and they became a power partner. I love that, power partner. And you taught us to speak our burdens, right? Like that, that happens. These are our burdens. You got to have entrusted friends, trusted advisors, and you speak to your burden. And is it true? I think that's a great question for anybody to ask. We have innate voice in our mind that tells us a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. And we're really good at lying to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that. Let's audit that inner voice. Like, is that true? Or is that one of these self lies that you like to make up, Trent? Because I'm pretty good at that, by the way. And it's not a strength I should have. And then, of course, like you talk about uh, growing up without a security, right? Like these people could leave me. These people will leave me. Like we start talking, that voice starts saying, but we have to face that fear, face that pain of our childhood. And then some really good direction of start a gratitude process, uh, practice. That's so important. For people who don't know what a gratitude practice is, you can find it all over the internet. You can reach out to Hazel, reach out to me. A gratitude practice tends to start every morning. Like wake up and start with something that you are thankful for. Let somebody know. Write it down. It's just as simple as writing three most things you're grateful for this morning right now when you wake up will start your day in so much of a better way surround yourself with the people you want to be like i know that sounds simple people but like are you doing that are you doing that today that's huge all right hazel is there a i want to end with this do you have a go-to like quote or verse or something like when things got you kind of jangled and you don't feel like you're on your game, your voice might be getting up inside your mind and, hey, I need to brush that out and get back to action. Do you have a, a saying or verse that you go to? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that. So yes, I do. When I get uh, stuck or in my feelings or, you know, I default to being Hazel from like the past. Yeah. I ask myself, so first of all, I would say like always have mentors. And what you said right now is true. Some people might have difficulty finding those people. Well, you know, you could find on the internet, right? People. So I, at, even at our stage, like to have mentors, you have to look for them, right? So for me, I have JLo as a mentor, Oprah as a mentor and Jesus Christ, right? And so when I'm stuck, I can say like, what would JLo do? Would JLo be perturbed by what's happening right now? No, she probably wouldn't. What, what would Jesus do? you know, in this situation. And so then that gets me unstuck. That I already know what Hazel would do. And, you know, Hazel's default is, you know, maybe get angry, whatever, where I'm at at that moment in fear, right? You know, going to those mentors, 
and asking like, what would they do? That is what gets me unduck and gets mm. me outside of myself and act, act differently. What is possible here? But that is what the biggest thing that I do is, and some people have told me and my kids tell me that they ask themselves, what would Hazel do? Oh, they do. <laughs> yes. Love yeah. That. And at my company, when you actually really do keep your word and you honor your values, your employees also should be just like you. So my employees in my company, my company runs itself. It has been running itself for over five years now. And one of the things there that the the employees tell me is that when they're stuck, and of course I'm not there, that they ask themselves, what would Hazel do? And then, so then that's it. So when in doubt, always do the right thing is what I tell my kids. When in doubt, do the right thing. And that's something really good too. Like you're weighing what to do. It's like, okay, then do the right thing, right? It's really easy to do like the lazy thing or your defaults, but when in doubt, weigh it out and do the right thing. Yeah. I tell a lot of people and I tell my kids too, like, Hey, when push comes to shove, there is no wrong way to do the right thing. Like if it is the right thing and you believe that in your heart and mind, you got my port. Now we might audit that later and like, hey, was it the right thing to do? Yeah, but in your mind, if you thought that was the right thing, there is no wrong way to do the right thing. I love that advice. My quote, I thought about this this week about you know thinking about your book, thinking about you, our relationship. And I came up with this verse that really stuck to me. It was actually a, a quote from a guy named Michael Lombardi. But the reality is, is that the line between success and surrender is often very thin. And that many of the people we most want to emulate nearly capitulated to adversity at some point as well. Like they faced it and they were like, oh man, I don't know if I should do this. Oprah, J-Lo, listen, Jesus is going into the garden going, hey, listen, if we don't have to do this, like uh, I'm pretty good without this whole cross thing and the whole uh, the whipping that's about to happen, right? Like we don't, we face adversity. Like I just think it's so powerful for You've got to face that fear. You got to go in. You know, I think for you, I just thought of that because I'm just thinking there's so many ways, there's so many roads you could have just 180 and gone back. Like, you know, you just could have turned around and said, you know what? It's getting too hard now. I don't know the direction. I I don't know where to find it. All those little things and the excuses we make. But, you know, I I just have a lot of honor for you, Hazel. I just admire you in in what you've done. I love your book. I haven't read the whole thing yet, which sucks, but it is. I've recommended it like five times. And I know you do a ton of things for people who want to be better, who want to get ahead. And I know you're a refreshing voice for people in the minorities, in women, uh, leaders, telling them that message that I love to share to you. Listen all put our pants on the same time. We all got the same things. We all got 10 fingers and toes. Like you got what everybody else got. And if someone else has done it before, I guess you can too, right? Somebody else did it. So I just love your message. And and I'm thankful we have this friendship, Hazel. I'm blessed. Thank you, Trent. Thank you for what you're doing, you know, bringing people on and interviewing us. And you know what, that's another thing, right? Like when you want to be successful, you want to know like how to, what's their morning routine? What do they read? What do they do? That is what I did. I studied the greats and now you're giving this opportunity to other people to study what the greats are doing. That's fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Winners Find a Way show. Follow us on the show, YouTube Live. Many more videos on Leadershipity channel. You can find that on Instagram, Twitter, at either Leadershipity or Trent M. Clark. I'm on both of those channels. And you can find us everywhere. And of course, leadershipity.com. Hazel, where can they find you again to finish? Hazel Ortega official across all media, social media. And my website is themasteryofmiracles.com. Yeah, you got to check that out. The Master of Miracles. And a lot of people, we are looking for these things. And there is a way for you. And I'm telling you, check it out. Look for our upcoming book, The Pyramid of Leadershipity. DM or email me if you'd like to get in touch. Always enjoy these conversations with one percenters. I hope we work hard to bring you high value like Hazel Ortega has given us today. So thankful. Please rate us five stars, subscribe to our channels, and we will see you next time on the Winners Find a Way show. Hate the crappy ingredients in many beverages and energy drinks? Rebellious Infusions are the go-to functional beverage. They have five or fewer plant-based organic ingredients. No sugar, no calories, loaded with antioxidants to boost your immune system, and L-thionine for brain health. Rebellious Infusions are available at drinkrebellious.com. Rethink your drink. For 10% off of your next purchase, use the code 99. Thank you for listening to the Winners Find a Way show and podcast. 
Trent, together with the leaders who shared their learning and experiences through this show, are grateful for allowing them to help and support you on your journey to becoming your best. Write a review, rate us five stars, and share this episode to your network.